All right, so the garage is laid out a little differently. There's a lot of things going on in here, but it is 2022. Welcome back. We're going to start the new year off with an old build from last year. It's actually going to be the snow bike build. There has yet to be any snowfall on the ground. We got our dog Max out here. Hi, Max. You want to say hi to the people on YouTube? They haven't seen you in such a long time. Some of you OGs on YouTube know who Max is. He's a good boy. But there's no snow on the ground. Tomorrow on the forecast, they're saying there's a chance of snow. So if there's going to be some snow, I'm going to want something to play in the snow. And that's going to be this thing right here. Now for all you new people, last year there's a full build video of this bike. I will put it in the link in the description below. I would recommend you go watch that before you watch this video. But we left off with playing with it in the snow for one day because I built it at the end of the winter and it had a whole bunch of flaws it didn't really drive too well it was doing this thing called trenching I'm gonna explain it all as this video goes on but the game plan in this video is to get it working as far as moving in the snow correctly cuz as the winter progresses I do have plans for a lot of modifications for this thing and I want to make this thing crazy fast I want it to have its own battery pack it should be waterproof this system is not waterproof right now but first let's get the thing moving and rolling so when we left off with this thing at the end of last season the thing did move it actually like it drove on the snow the problem is when you got into the deep snow it kind of like dug itself a little hole I'm gonna throw in a little clip from the last build video of this thing to show you what I'm talking about. So now it's flying. Oh, the deep stuff kills it. But then once you get in, we're moving. And then the deep stuff, oh, it doesn't like the deep stuff. I think that's because of the way we have the single pulley in the back, the single tensioner. I need more surface area for that track to not trench as much more of float on top of the snow. So most of that trenching problem is coming from this back pulley. Basically the surface area of this pulley, all that's contacting the ground is this little area right here at the very bottom of the pulley. This track's not really doing anything. This track's obviously not doing nothing either. So what needs to happen is we have to get more of this track to touch the ground. And the way I wanna do that is by using rollerblade wheels and it should look like this so what I did was I took all the tension off the track itself to give us as much slack as possible because I want to get this as much touch in the ground as we could so with the two rollerblade wheels set up there I'm gonna make a plate it's gonna come across here it's gonna hold those two wheels we're gonna reinforce the plate to the swing arm on that side with some metal pipe and other stuff but basically what it's going to give us, it's going to give us a little over 8 inches of contact patch to the ground. So instead of it only relying on the little 1 inch slither on the back when I was running just the tensioner pulley, with the two roll blade wheels it will distribute the track to the ground more, giving us a little over 8 inches of actual movable track against the ground, which should increase our traction and hopefully stop the trenching issue. But that's all in theory I don't really know exactly if this is gonna work this track was off a snowblower so I mean it might not even be big enough for what I'm trying to do but this is where we're gonna start but we're gonna have to go jump to the lathe real quick because these roll blade wheels are actually a little too thick to sit in between this groove that's in the track so let's go move our way over to the lathe and cut these down a little bit. Since there's no proper way to really hold this wheel in the lathe while I cut it down, I just made this quick little tool using some pieces of aluminum and a screw. And it gives us the ability to hold the wheel.
that's what it's gonna look like. So now let's pop the bearings into these things. And let's get them onto the back of this track. Oh, so much better. All right, so now that we got the bearings back mounted in the roll blade wheels, we can put the wheels in the track. I'm gonna take these two metal bars, put them on both sides, and just kind of make something to hold the wheels in there. And it should look like this. So with the plates mounted, uh, let me just take it apart to show you a little better. So this is our system. We got the roll blade wheels. We got one plate, two plate, and some little aluminum spacers I made to space it all out. Now originally, I was gonna weld this to the back over here, but then I realized if I adjust the tensioner, this thing kinda needs to slide with it because I have the bolt going through the back of the plates like that. So this is kind of one unit that's going to slide back and forth. So what I did was I just put a little aluminum block over here with two screws and it rides on the bottom of the swing arm over there. So it has a way to slide back and forth and be adjustable. I just came so up with another put idea it all together. real quick. This is my tensioner that I was talking about. So what I could do is I could tie in the screw and it actually walks the pulley back and it tensions the track. Here's that little aluminum sliding block that I was talking about before. But I realized there's so much weight on this side that I could use a little support on this side of the bike, especially when I start tensioning it. So I found this tie rod that actually fits perfect from here. And I'm just going to weld a little mount on the frame over there to hold it. And then I can twist the tie rod to equally tension this pulley perfectly straight. And just to add a little more support to this side of the bike. It's not that invasive looking and it kind of looks pretty cool. So we're going to weld the tie rod and I think we're going to be almost ready for a test drive. So here we got it. It's all tensioned up. Spins pretty free. Not too much resistance. Now that wheel is not really touching anything because when it sits on the ground it kind of pushes it straight and it'll ride on it but let's give it a quick little spin and see what it does sweet I think we're ready for the snow all right so the weatherman finally got it right and we got some snow now there is a couple things I do want to do to the bike still so we're not really done just yet. Last year, I ran into the problem where I think I mounted the ski a little too far back on the pivot. I gotta move the forks a little more forwards. So the ski doesn't act too much like a brake and it kind of floats a little better. But we'll get to that after. Just by rolling it out here, I could already tell that this thing works a million times better. It looks so much better, but I guess the proof is in the riding, so let's just back this thing up. It's super sketchy on the concrete because there's like no steering ability, but we're just gonna do a quick little test. It rips! <laughs> you have no idea how fast this thing is. Maybe I could set the GoPro down and you guys could see it in action. The lack of brakes kind of suck, but it does have a brake system. We are gonna fix it and make it a little better. There's also a clicking noise going on back there. Not 100% what it is yet, but we're definitely gonna figure it out. All right, so we got it at this little field. It's nothing crazy. The snow is about, I would say like, maybe six to seven inches deep. It's very soft and fluffy. And let's just take the thing for a rip. I could probably do a top speed run with it too so you guys get an idea how fast it goes, but it turns a lot easier on the deeper snow. There's a guy with the dog over there, he's gonna bark, but look, this thing moves. 
cracking right through the powder. So, I'm gonna say this thing is a success. It works really good eating the snow. The batteries are not fully charged. I should have probably charged them before I got out here, but the snow is pretty deep and the thing rips. All right, hopefully you guys can see this. I'm gonna try doing this one-handed. We're gonna try to go into the powder again, not on the pre-made track so we get a true top speed, but let's, let's get it. Let's go into the powder. We're at nine, 11, 12, 13. 14. So I think that's all it's got. It's got 14. Look how good this thing turns. Oh my god, I can't. Oh! <laughs> Amazing. Okay, so let's just rip it around like a little snow bike that it really is. Do some turns. Okay, turning is very weird to get used to, but it, it is doable. Going down the street, we gotta turn. Oh, whoa! Turning is definitely weird to get used to. I do want to modify the front track, like make it wider and put little skegs on it, but we'll save that for later on. Oh my god, the handlebars. I am so happy this thing works so good. <laughs> yes! All right, let's load it up, take it back to the garage, and I'll tell you what I got for further plans for this thing, because we are not done with it yet. All right, so now that we got the thing actually up and driving, and it runs good, like it drives good, which is a huge improvement of how we left off with it last season, I think we're ready to add more power to it. I wasn't too happy with that 14 miles an hour. Like, when you're going, like, on short bursts of throttles the thing has a lot of traction now so it grips and gets there really fast but the top speed 14 miles an hour is just not going to cut it so from this point moving on forwards the next episode we are going to modify some more stuff as far as trying to get as much power out of this thing i'm going to reach out to electro and company and see what he can do for a controller something not that I would recommend for you Razor guys, but we're gonna try to pump over 100 amps to this little silver motor. I know there's guys out there that do above 100 amps. Maybe we'll go to 150 and maybe even 180. The problem they run into with these silver motors and running that much amps through them is that they tend to overheat, but since we are a snow bike application, when the snow is gonna kinda hit the motor and I feel like it's gonna keep it cool. So I'm not too worried about overheating, so I'm gonna try to pump as many amps to that. Now to complement the amps from the new controller, I am going to make a different battery pack. We are no longer going to use the 80 volt Greenwork batteries that are in here. I think I'm going to convert this thing into LiPo. So we're going to do like RC car batteries, big ones. Probably going to do four of them. And I also want to make the battery box watertight. And another cool feature that I kind of want to do, which we're going to start planning now and it's going to probably be the next episode, is I want the battery box to be temperature controlled. So this thing is going to be living its life probably in the cold. Lipos and other batteries don't like the cold that much, so I'm going to try to do a little heating element inside the battery to keep the batteries at a certain temperature all the time. This way, you don't just notice the degrade when it starts to get cold. I want the batteries to last as long as possible so that's gonna probably be the next episode we're gonna do bigger batteries a sealed water box a sealed battery box new controller from electro and company and we're probably gonna have to modify this chain because it's number 25 chains probably not gonna hold up to all that extra power but we'll find out then so with that being said oh I also got to change the front we got to remount that to over here somewhere that's not a good spot for it but with that being said, if you like what you saw, give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, share this with your friends, post it on Facebook, post it on Instagram. If I see your repost, I'll give you a shout out in the next episode. So with that, 
This was a great success. Chris Uno, out. I'll see you on the next one, guys.